What's up guys? Got a 2000 Toyota Avalon. Uh, today we're going to do valve cover gaskets and spark plugs on it. I'm going to show you how to do the process um, on this vehicle. You got to take the intake manifold off to get to the back valve cover. As you can see, it's been leaking all bad on the front, all everywhere. This thing has went through two quarts of oil between oil changes. Um, it is burning oil for some odd reason. This car only has 120,000 miles on it. It's burning oil and leaking oil. Um, we're going to check the PCV valve while we're in there. And some other things. Make sure we ain't no lines busted or anything. But it's pretty odd for a Toyota to be burning oil at 120,000 miles. So bear with me. Put you on the tripod. And... We're going to try to get some good angles and we'll walk, walk you through the process of changing valve cover gaskets. And we're going to change the plugs while we're there too. Because the only way you can get to the spark plugs is pull the intake manifold off. Alright, first we're going to take off the, um, I call it the beauty cover. We're going to take off the cover right here. Don torx bits or allen heads. Got one here, here, and here. Um... Take off the oil cap. Bunch of junk down in there. Ain't looking good for it. We're going to get this off. Then we're going to go to the next part. Oh, what are you getting dirty? The hell? And the Toyota logo right here spins to loosen it up, guys. You ever seen that before? So our goal is to get everything off the valve covers. So we're going to take spark plugs. The um, let's, we're going to do the spark plugs. Take the coils out. On do this rail harness right here. Those out there looks like eight millimeters, might be sixes. Um, the front one's pretty easy to get to. The back one we got to take off the intake manifold. We're going to leave. Try to get this darn lightning light. I got this bright light by my head. We're going to leave the fuel well. Our goal is to get that off. Don't mess the fuel well. Um, but very carefully. It just, it's just, you just got to finesse that whole piece out right there. To get to that back valve cover. Uh, right now we're going to work on the front one. So what you do is. Undo it. All you do your connections. Get that hose right there out of the way. Um, bow cover bolts, you got one hiding under, you got one hiding underneath this, uh, radiator hose right here, which I'm very scared to take the radiator hose off, because it's really brittle. But you got one hiding under there, right there in the corner. We're gonna finesse her out too. So, we'll get her in a minute. But other than that, Bear with me, we're gonna get all this done. And then we'll go walk you through getting all this shit off the back back here.
Make sure your little O wing, you put it back on your um, core pack. The back cover gasket set sometimes comes with these, sometimes it don't. Make sure you pay attention. Okay. Go ahead and hit these little bolts, these pins all around the valve cover. Like I said, the front one's pretty, pretty easy. The back one's gonna be a bitch. Did finesse to get it out. Alright, we're gonna see if she pops up. I'm hoping I got all these. And I do. Here's the front valve cover. Been changed before. That's a blue gasket on it. Been changed before. But it's been a long time. That's that foam stuff that goes over that, that um, ready to hose. It's hard as a rock. But yes, yeah, been changed before. Got a blue gasket on it. Velcro. Um, let me see, I'll give y'all a different angle. Show how nasty this thing is. For 120,000 miles, <laughs> she's pretty gunked up. 120,000 miles. So he changes the oil every 3,000 miles, but the person who had it before, they glad that it changed the oil. I mean, good God. I mean, it's baked on there. So we'll see what the back one looks like here in a minute. And go from there. Um, now we're going to have to... I forgot to unhook the battery. Make sure you always unhook the battery when you do this shit. Um, unhook the negative part of the battery. We're going to get this L box. I'm going to see if I can cheat. I'm going to see if I can cheat. I'm just going to unhook the cables. I'm just going to unhook the cables right here. And I'm going to unhook the two hoses. And when I pull the, the um, intake off, all this will sit here. I'm going to try to. Done one like that in a lot of Toyota, it worked out. Some of these, they don't let you do it. Because you have a lot of hose on the back you got to get to. You bear with me. But we're gonna get we gotta get all this shit. Unbolt this bracket right here, hose this, and this should fall this way. There and nail. So ten nail, ten nail. Matter of fact. I'm gonna hit it right now while I'm talking to you. Two tens. Get your nut off. Nut. That sounded funny. Let's see. Your whole assembly moves now. Alright. 
So since the whole assembly moved, that's good. But when you move it, you can see what's holding you. Undo this hose right here. That's very brittle. Undo that one. And this little tiny one right here. Let's go and underneath the intake, okay? So to put you back on the tripod, I can have two hands, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, word of advice, put a rag over the front head that you won't drop these down in the motor. You don't want none of these to be <laughs> stuck between these gears or fall down that big ass hole right there as an oil return valley. You don't want that to happen. So, bear with me. Try to make the best video for y'all. Oh, that hose is so brittle. I might end up replacing that for the guy. Then the hose comes over here to your vacuum um, flat thing, I call it. You get it out of the way. And then you flop it to, over like that. Just flop it over like that, and that starts you over. Um, I'm going to try to get this out. About the thing. Let me go get my other flashlight that I can look around the back. Give me one second, guys. Every Toyota is kind of different. Avion, the Sierra. I, the last one I did was on the Sierra. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I had a bracket in the back. This one looks like it don't have it. So we should be able to take a shortcut and just leave the airbox in there. So we'll find out in a minute. Um, we end up having to take the airbox off. You got to. So we'll just find that in a minute. Thought about it. You got a big ass ground. Darn it. Stick. You stupid light. You got a ground right here. You also got a wire. This, make sure this wire is routed back behind this. Like it's supposed to. It connects right here. Unconnect it. Um, that bracket I was talking about is back there in the back. It's right there. See what the little red dot is? That's where that bolt is. You put your hand. Toyota was nice to put a red dot there. You put your finger back there. You can feel it. Take that one bolt out. Um, this job has turned out to be okay. Um, I do got to put knock sensors in it too. So, this can be a video where we're replacing the knock sensors too. So... Right now we're getting valve covers off. And we're gonna get we're gonna get all the way down to the bottom where the knock sensors are. I'm gonna have to um I am gonna have to unplug the fill well. I'm gonna try to move the line out of the way without hold on. So if I remember correctly, it's once you get the top plantum out of the way, the bottom plantum will come off of one piece, and I can slide all that off one piece without disconnecting the fuel lines. But the knock sensors are down in there in the valley. So we'll get them in a minute. Right now, we still got to get these tables off. Get that bracket off back there on the back. Get this big hose off for your brake booster. And this intake top plenum should come off. Like I said, I'm going to try to cheat, leave this on here. The less I got to take off, the better. That ground I was pointing to on the side of the thing going in is uh, a 12. 
that bolt on that bracket in the back is a pain in the ass to get to. It's going to be a 14. Quarter inch drive ratchet is the only way to get it out. If you got big hands like I do, well, you'll be cussing at it. Alright, so I got the little bastard out back there. I didn't film on the other angle or show me get it out because I didn't think y'all want to see me cussing and I dropped my, my socket about 15 times and once I dropped once I got the bolt out I dropped the bolt down there and it disappeared at the engine bay somewhere so yeah we'll have to find it here in a little while so it's like it's three sockets down the hill just sitting on the frame somewhere along with a bolt I gotta find Solder cables off real easily. Let's see here. They're pretty self self explanatory. Which of you hit this tin right here with this bracket? Actually, that's gonna be a 12 more likely. That, that's a 12 right there, guys. 10 and 12. It's a lot of 10 and 12 on this car. Back it out the way, take it down here. And you know what? I still have not loosened the battery up. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, I done done so many cars. I mean, you you pay attention, you don't got to unhook the battery. But the wolf, it's common sense. Unhook the battery, guys. I mean. Watch the call log and go off and hook it back up. Let's see here. Got that undone. Got a vacuum line right here. The one that's going up top right here. If you're not sure where something goes, take a marker and mark it. Especially when you got like a lot of vacuum lines. Especially like on a Nissan. Nissan is world worse. Like a Pathfinder. A million vacuum lines. You don't know where the fuck they go. So I guess take a couple of marks on the line. I guess mark the spot where it goes to. They, I won't forget. Because I ain't going to lie, guys. If you mess up, if you ever mess up and you take one of those vacuum lines and you mix it up with a coolant line, you done messed up. And I'm not gonna lie, I've done it before, and let's just say how to put a little motor on the car. So pay attention where your vacuum lines go. Especially this long one right here that's been sneaky. So we just tuck her right there for now. Um, we're gonna take this brake booster line off. Be very careful with some of these hoses, because they're brittle. Alright. You got a sensor right back here you got to unplug. Thought of position sensor, make sure you unplug it. You don't want to break it. Start a position sensor right here. Make sure you don't break it. It's going to be a pain in the ass to unplug too. But we'll get her. Shouldn't be no more. And you got a um, idle air control valve sensor down there you're going to unplug too right below it. Position sensor, 
and right below it, you got a idle air control valve sensor. You got to unplug. So. Get my lights over that I can see. Thought of position sensor right here. Make sure you don't break it. She's gonna be a pain in the ass to unplug too. But we'll get her. So thought of position sensor. And then right below it. Right. Give my thing a focus. Right there. Right below is a idle air control valve sensor unplug it and then we can take these two hoses off and i'm hoping i can go ahead and get the bolts out right here and she'll come up the top planning part we'll go ahead and go down to the very bottom because we gotta put knock sensors on it too so i went ahead and just took that little box out right there just get out of my way That little box out of my way. Here's the sensor I was talking about. Um, I actually broke the clip on the, the clip to get it off. So now we gotta really finesse it without breaking the sensor. So bear with me. This is the last piece. It only takes one little thing up. Oh, we got this. And we got a this right here, the a cooling line hose right here. I almost forgot. Let's see here. Yep, we got two coolant hoses. I almost forgot. We got one here. And one heel, two coolant hoses. So you're gonna lose some antifreeze, but you'll find out in a minute. Oh, you can take vice grips and clap these off where you won't be pissing everywhere. And of course, my other, my other camera is gonna die on me right here, the one I'm holding. Um. Got the thing off right here, so I'm gonna switch back. I want to use my other camera on the, on the tripod. Trying to get the best angle as possible, but bear with me. Um, got that undone. Unhook your coolant line right here, and right here you will be using antifreeze. Take the vice grip, something, clamp it off. If the hose is hard as a rock like this, don't do it. Um, but after you get these two off, you should be able to get. That nut, I gotta find my Allen wrenches for these other ones, sad to say. They get the other ones off, and we should go from there. Which the top ten of them should come up. And my camera died. I guess to let y'all know, there's a little fucking bracket back in the back right here too. Right there. That you can't really see, but it's a little bracket there. If you want to be like me, when you take the cooling line off, Stick a bolt in the end of the line, that way you won't be pissing in the freeze everywhere. That's how I do things, guys. Why make a mess when you don't got to? Let me get this other one off, and we should be able to get these other bolts out over here. It's up. Let me see if I can count them. Uh, I've got one here, 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 and here. And I believe that's the one, all the ones we got to take out to get the top plan them off. Um, I gotta find my sockets for these two right here, but we'll get it in a minute, guys. Let's roll with it. Alright, those two bolts right here are gonna be a 5 sixteenths Allen socket. Come on, focus. 5 sixteenths Allen. Is that, is those two in the front? One on each side is 14s. Let's see if we can get this thing off. See what happens. See if we've missed anything. Oh. Don't forget we can we lift this thing up right here. I'll get my other hands. These are very 
popped up. Stuck in that darn stud. Okay, am I hung on something? Yes, I am. Alright, there's a hose over here in the corner going to the valve cover. That I didn't see. Um Make sure you get that off. It's actually the PCB valve, to be honest with you. See if we can pop it out, out of that hole. She's bad. I believe she's bad. Piece of rebound is bad, I believe. If I get off this stud right here in the corner, it would be a business. back here. Hold on, let me get down there to see what I'm doing. This one is a little different. How'd my camera get moved? <sighs> so, way back here in the back, there's a freaking little ground strap on the back of the intake. Make sure you get that undone. It's a 10. And then the intake should come out of the way. And that PCV valve a bad PCV valve would be doing that shit too. So I'll call him right now. Tell him to go ahead and get a PCV valve for it. He's out getting the parts right now as we speak. Usually I get I get the parts ahead of time. Before I do a job. But this, this guy I know. I trust him. So I'm not worried about him. Um, anybody else. New customer wise. I ain't doing those games no more. I'm tired. I mean... Around. All right, let's see the little bastard comes up this time. Yeah, here it comes. Take it up here and flip it over. Let me go ahead and check this PCB vibe out. It's bad. So, here's your PCV valve. Put it here at shake. It ain't shaking as bad. Sorry, guys. I was looking at something. But yeah, PCB valve's bad. Um, we're telling me you need to get one of them. But now we've got a gaping hole we can see. 
All right, guys, so this video is actually turned out to be a long, long video. Um, so, I was originally making this video to basically just vial covers and spark plug change, which we are still doing. Um, we're still going to do, um, we're still going to go ahead and do, um, the knock sensors. We got to get, we got to um, we'll have to unbolt the fuel wells. Both of them should come up together. And we got to get, we got to get the bottom plantum off, the bottom plantum unbolted. But, bunch of bolts, take out. But, it's common sense guys, take, just unhook all, unhook all your fuel injectors. Take the bottom plant them off and your knock sensors down the valley. So I ain't gonna video doing that. Um I'll be back here shortly when we um when we got the parts in hand. Back valve covers the same process. This one actually has the nut. Undo undo all your wires from your core packs, take the core packs out and pull the back valve cover off. Plain and simple. Um this punk ass bracket and that one's probably gonna have to come out the way, but sometimes it don't. But same process as the front. So, all right, like I said, valley cover, unbolt it, flip it to the side, leave the gap, leave all your shit hooked up to it. Um, like I said, you will be losing antifreeze. Um. Good thing none of the other went down the motor. Thank God. Um, there was one knock sensor there. And one right there. You got a big ass hose right here. In the middle of the valley. I'm going to try to do it without. You can do it without get, taking that hose off. You don't have to use that much antifreeze. But there was both your freaking knock sensors there. And there. Change them out and you'll fix your knock sensor code. One thing you do now is reverse the process and put it all back together, guys. Make sure y'all like, subscribe. Um, like I said, just put the valve covers, the gaskets back in the valve covers, reverse the process. Put it all back together and you're done. Um, if I showed you how to get the front one off, that's basically, what, once you get the intake manifold off, everything else is easy. I put knock sensors down in the valley. And we just go from there. Make sure y'all like, subscribe.